Hey everybody, it's Jim here. And I know I said I wasn't gonna buy any more guitars for myself. I'm heading to the pawn shop, but this guitar is not for me. Sometimes, if this thing checks out, you can get some really good deals and hopefully this will turn into a quick flip and somebody will get a really good deal on top of that. So, let's get going. All right, we made it to the pawn shop. One thing that's really important is to have the money on hand if you see a deal pop up. I found this one on Craigslist. These people are willing to take cash, which is amazing because it means it's gonna be less money out of my pocket. So let's go inside. I doubt they're gonna let me film, but who knows. All right, guys, what was I just saying about being quick and having the money and going in? As I walk into this pawn shop, there's a guy with his phone looking up reverb and checking out this guitar that I went in to purchase. I pulled out the cash in my pocket and I said, lady, I already called you, let's go. She said, sir, he called, <laughs> brought the guitar right over to me, made sure it didn't have a headstock crack. If that doesn't give you a hint of what it is, checked out, little dirty, player's grade, but got a great deal. Let's get this thing home and check it out. And this is the guitar that I was willing to pay. Cash in hand, almost no questions asked as soon as I made sure there was no headstock repair on it. And there isn't a 1987 Gibson Les Paul Standard in the Ebony. Now, there's some things I wanna talk about with this guitar. It's super cool, player grade, but I know a lot of people that click on these sorts of videos when they see the guitar, they immediately want to hear the guitar. So I did record some sound samples. It's not gonna be full on demo. We're not gonna go through every single thing that this guitar can do, but I wanted to give you an idea. So let's hear them now. So as you can see, this one is not something that lived in a closet. It has absolutely been played. It's got wear on it. It's got divots on it. It's got buckle rash all over it. But I really, really like it because there's no repairs on a guitar like this. Now, another thing that I love about this specific guitar before we get into some of the actual buying and reselling advice I'd like to give to you all, I really love this neck. There's two things that I love about this neck. First of all, due to the fact that this guitar really has been played, there's no way to hide that. This is a 1987 model. The fingerboard, the actual edges of it, have naturally kind of rolled over the years and of the use of this guitar. So this feels so worn in. When I play a lot of production model USA Gibsons, I do not have this kind of feeling on the neck. That's typically reserved for something like a historic or above when you're going into that kind of price range. So feeling a standard that is this well broken in, that's just this comfortable. I play a lot of thumb over kind of chords. This is just absolutely perfect. The other thing I really about, like about this neck is the actual thickness and the taper to it. It starts at 0.3 at the first fret, but when you get to the 12th fret, there we are, 0.97. So it's a pretty significant taper. A lot of the times it would stop at around yeah, 0.93, 0.94, but 097 super, super chunky up here and very, very comfortable to play. Now, 
I think this guitar is awesome. It's got the Tim Shaw pickups in it. This was the year before they started to include the Bill Lawrence, the originals. And if you follow this channel, you will have heard those pickups before because I had a 1988 Orville by Gibson Les Paul Custom that had those as factory equipment. I like those pickups, but some people are kind of turned off because PCB boards. This is just straight up PAF style Tim Shaw pickups from 81 to 87. This is what a Les Paul standard would come with. So if you're curious, first of all, this guitar is for sale. Well, might be by the time you're watching this, it could have sold. It's got a lot of interest in it. When you go and you want to buy and sell guitars, there's a few things that you absolutely have to do. The first thing you have to do if you're somebody who cruises around Craigslist or Reverb, I mean, I don't really advise Reverb as far as getting the best deal, but Craigslist or a certain guitar shop that maybe you find that constantly gets good deals in and will give you a very fair price on them, you have to have the money and you can't be willing to hesitate if you see something that you know you can resell, which leads me to point number two. You have to understand the actual market value. Just because you see guitars being listed up at a certain price on Reverb, and Reverb is a very useful place to get an idea of what things are listing for, what you really want to be looking for is the sold listings. Now it's not going to give you all the details of the guitar that was listed, the exact condition is just going to say good, very good, excellent, whatever the actual seller had listed it as. You're not going to see all the pictures involved, but that's going to be a little bit more realistic about what you can expect. The third thing that you have to know is how to differentiate between models. And for example, when I went in this time, they also had a, I presume, mid-70s SG bass. Now, I hate SGs, but this was priced pretty decently. However, it didn't have a serial number on it. And when I went home and I really started to research it, I learned that was actually a common thing from 1975 through 1907. I didn't know that at the time. The other thing that threw me off was I thought it was an EB3 base, but it only had two knobs and an input jack. It did not have uh, I believe it's called a Variac switch on it, so I was just like, eh, I don't know about that. And by the time I was so uncertain about it, the guitar, or the bass rather, is gone now, and it's better off to miss out on something that you're not 100% positive on. Never get out of your comfort zone. If you want to start doing things like this, really get to know a few models and become an expert in them so that you don't have those doubts because the last thing you want to do is invest in something that you cannot at least get your money all the way back on which leads me to point number three when you're calculating your profit and your loss now for example you might find a guitar listed locally for five hundred dollars when you go online some people actually sell them for fifteen hundred dollars if you were to do that and assume that you're going to be taking home a thousand dollars, you're just flat out wrong. You have to compensate for all of the fees that are going to be involved. You have shipping fees, which are going to vary based on where in the country your guitar sells to, assuming that you're going to be shipping it. You have site fees. If you sell on Reverb, you are looking at either 7.5 or 7.7%, depending on how many sales that you've made there and how good your feedback is. It's something like that. But in general, still, call it 7.5. That's a significant chunk of change change here. You combine those two things right there on that $1,500 guitar, you're walking with maybe $1,300 if you are lucky. I mean, that's still good. You make $800, but it's not $1,000. Really what you would like to be doing is you would like to set up your own shop, and I'm so happy and grateful to everybody that is purchasing guitars directly from audiomomusic.com slash shop because I only get hit with 2.9% fees. That allows me to also give the customer a better price because I'm pricing it separately than I would knowing that I'm going to get charged a fortune on reverb. And believe me, if that 5% difference roughly between that 2.9 and 7.5 doesn't seem like a big deal to you, sell 10 or 15 guitars and then all of a sudden you look at how much money is lost and goes right back into that system, it's, it'll make you not want to sell there anymore. And there's a lot of times I've made videos like I'm done with this. And unfortunately, with just the way the market is, due to lack of options, it's kind of a necessity. Although I do encourage you to also do the same thing. Reach out to people on forums, do things like that. Whatever you can do to save money, but also be aware with the new tax laws, you want to try to do your best here to 
actually take receipts of everything to be sure that your ducks are all in a row legally and things like that because anything over $600 you're going to have to account for the profits for just so you know. And a final piece of advice I'd like to give to anybody who's trying to do a little bit of a side hustle and get into something like this as well. If you only have $1,000 to get started, I would not really spend that whole $1,000 because what could happen is you might say, oh, this is a gold mine. This is going to sell overnight. I'm going to undercut all these people. Yeah. And then you might get undercut. All of a sudden, that guitar you thought was going to have a quick turnaround time, you might be sitting on it for a month. doesn't matter how great your price is. There's a lot of other factors out there going on in this world. I don't need to tell you about how things are. I'm sure you are already really well aware of it. So never bank on something selling immediately either. And if you can't afford to wait on a higher end kind of purchase like this Les Paul Standard, then just kind of avoid it, man, because you don't want to be put in a situation where you're going to be taking a loss because sometimes that is inevitable. If you're really that strapped for cash, it is the end of the month. Your bills don't care that you have an asset that is worth something more than you're willing to sell it for today. Just give me five more days. I promise somebody's going to buy it. No, they're not going to care about that. Your car payment's not going to care about that. Trust me, you guys. Don't overextend yourselves. Play within your limits. If you do want to get into this kind of stuff, you can make a few bucks doing it. Just please be careful about it. And again, I just, I don't want anybody to get burned. And wrapping this up, I have a few little general pieces of advice that don't fall into any one specific category. If you're going to be selling the guitar online and you're going to be shipping it, take a full high definition video. You can do this on your cell phone. Does not matter. As long as it's not in the pitch black, this will work just fine. Show the exact condition of the guitar as you are packing it into the box. Put it in, show that you're actually competently packing it. I have a video teaching you how to properly pack a guitar if you sell it. Click up here if you're confused or you just want to be extra secure about it. Then make sure you have full insurance on it. You do all those things, you're going to be all good. Nobody's going to be able to scam you. You got your butt covered. The next tip I have is invest the time in yourself and your own skills in order to be able to diagnose, do light little repairs, and a full setup on any kind of guitar that you're interested in reselling this will go a long way because if you get something and it has a problem with it say some of the electronics are busted and maybe a volume pot's gone you don't know how to solder you are eating into your own profits because now you have to go and pay somebody else to do it that's more time the guitar cannot be listed then you know, it just cuts into the bottom line here. That's not what you want. You invest some money into a little bit of tools. You don't need to be a master luthier, but it really does go a long way. And every penny saved is a penny earned. And the last thing again, if your gut is telling you something is too good to be true or you're not 100% positive about a certain model and what it's really worth on the market, I would advise not doing it. Even if you do miss that one, it might be for the best. But that's all I have for you guys today. If you found any of these useful, please let me know in the comments down below. If you have any tips for other people that might be interested in doing this as well or any other questions, you can also do that down there as well. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the next one. Take it easy, everybody.